physiology. Physiology is a science of life. It's a branch of biology that aims to understand the mechanism of living things from the base of cell function at the anaerobic and molecular level to the in integrated behavior of the whole body and the influence of external environment. So it means the normal functions of the living body. So it's first introduced or it's a modern physiology. Father of modern physiology is William Harvey. Goes to the body water. So body water is an important measure. When it comes to a healthy body, the human body needs water to function the right way. That means water is a very essential substance, vital substance to our body. So body, the total amount of body water is, uh, body water means the total amount of fluid in the human body. So human body should be consumed of at least 50% of water. The exact percentage that is always depend upon the name of the number of factors. One is age, gender, etc. One is primary building block of cells. So body water means that's the help of building the cells. It helps to regulate internal body temperature and strengthen your muscles and moisturize your skin. So there are just a few examples of why body water is drinking water is so important. So drinking water is very important to maintain this body function. So now we look through the water percentage of body in infants and children. Up to six months of the baby, the average is 74 percentage of water should be in the body, baby's body. In six months to one year, it's there must be 60 percentage. One to 12 years, it's 60 percentage. Then comes to the adult level, a total to 18 years of age, if the person is a male, average 59 percentage, if the female it is 56 percentage and 19 to 50 years, that is the range of uh, male is having a 59 percentage and female 60 percentage and from the 51 or older ages, the water level becomes again reduced to 56 percentage in male and female it's 47 percentage. So you must think where all this water is stored. So this all water should be stored in your body and you, should, you may wonder where this water is stored in our body. So it should be stored in all our organs, tissues and other body parts. So then we have to see which are the parts. 31 percentage. In addition, there is a, a liquid portion of the blood called plasma. It's about 90 percentage of water. So that plasma helps to carry blood cells, nutrients and hormones throughout the body. So these are the storage units of the Water. In a cellular level, water should be stored in intracellular fluid, that means the fluid, store, uh, fluid within the cell and extracellular fluid, that is the fluid outside the cell. It is also known as ICF and ECF. So why this water is important in our body function. So it's a, water is essential for every system and function of the body and it has many, many responsibilities. For example, for the building of new cells, the key nutrients of, the, of every cell relies on a for survival. So water is essential for the survival of nutrients used for the building of new cells. And uh, it also used for metabolizers and transport of proteins and carbohydrate from the food to eat to nourish your body. So water is one of the essential substance for the functions of the body. It also helps to flush the waste. It means uh, uh, mainly through the urine. 
and maintain the healthy body temperature through sweat and respiration when the temperature rises. So is the part of shock absorber system in the spine and is also protect the sensitive tissues. And part of the fluid that surrounded and protects the brain and the uh, baby in the womb. So, so CSF, that's a part of the fluid that surrounds and protects the brain and the spinal cord, but that contain also water. And baby in the womb, that's a placenta, that also contain water is the main content. And uh, the main ingredient of saliva is water. And the, the next is it helps to join it helps the uh, lubrication of the joints. So these are the main, one of the main use of water in the body. So um, body fluid compartments is two types. One is easier for extracellular fluid and the other one is intracellular fluid. So this including plasma, transcellular fluid, adenine fluid, CSF, pleural fluid, peritoneal fluid, cyanide uh, fluid, and digestive secretion, and station fluids, placental tissue fluid. There is a fluid between the uh, connective tissue, cartilages, and bones. Next is the composition of body fluids. So, it contains inorganic substance. So, extracellular fluid contains large quantity of chlorides, bicarbonates, glucose, fatty acids, and oxygen. But intracellular uh, fluid contains large quantities of potassium, magnesium, phosphate, sulfates, and protein. The pH also has a slight variation. So, ICF having the pH of 7 and ECF having the pH of 7.4. So totally 70% of the body, uh, body contains liquid, uh, 60% of the body contains liquid and the uh, uh, proteins is 50%, 80% and fat is 16%. So so this is ingredients that is in, uh, ingredients that's present in the body fluids. Sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, bicarbonate. Like all the uh, glucose, protein, urea, and all the base products are also present in the plasma administration fluids and uh, intracellular fluid. But the thing is potassium is important um, in organic salt that should be in the plasma, it is only 4.2, that's a um, average of 4.2 millimol. And but it's intracellular fluid, it contains 1.4. That's the difference. So if the lysis of the cells occurs, then this potassium can be used from the intracellular fluid to the extracellular fluid. That's why lysed sample cannot be used for any blood test especially potassium examination. So next is the functions of kidney and urinary tract. So the main function of the kidney is to maintain him homeostasis. So homeostasis means, uh, that is the maintenance of homeostasis, kidney will reabsorb glucose, amino acids, bicarbonate, sodium, water, phosphate, chloride, sodium, magnesium, potassium, ions. So thus it will maintain this homeostasis. Second is remove the waste materials. So second function of the body is to, uh, kidney is to remove waste products and toxins. So this is the one of the main function of the body, uh, kidney. And the main waste product means, it's a, one of the main waste product is urea. That's a result of the term of 
proteins and uric acid that is the breakdown of nucleic acid. And the third function is regulate electrolyte concentration. So regulate the electrolyte concentration that is helps to maintain the homeostasis. And next is regulate the fluid within the body that is water that should be filtered through the filtered from the plasma as GFR the glomerular filtrate and then it will be reabsorbed back. Most of the water should be reabsorbed back by the um, tubules. And the next one is helps to regulate blood pressure. And that is to uh, uh, whenever necessary they will absorb sodium chloride or salt and anything that alter blood pressure can be damaged the kidney over time including excessive alcohol consumption, smoking and obesity. So it's very important to maintain the blood pressure. So that is helped by the kidney only we have to regulate the blood pressure. The next is to maintain the acid base balance or pH. So, to maintaining the acid base balance or pH in the body by two processes. One is reabsorbing or regenerating bicarbonate from the urine. Second is excreting hydrogen ions and base acids. So, thus, the maintaining acid base balance or pH of the body. And the main function of the main function is to produce hormones that affect blood and bones. So some important hormones like erythropoietin that produce uh, that the production of uh, help for the production of RPC and renin that expansion of arteries and the volume of blood plasma, lymph and interstitial fluid. Then calcito calcitrol that is active metabolites that help active metabolites of vitamin D that increases the calcium and phosphorus. So this hormone will affect the bone also. So thus, these are the main functions of the kidney. So in, um, that will maintain the amyostasis, remove the base products, and toxins, regulate electrolyte concentration, regulate amount of fluid within the body, and help to regulate blood pressure. Also help to maintain acid-base balance in the body and produces hormones that affect blood and And the function of upper urinary tract is to produce urine. That means eliminate excess water, waste products and electrolyte and adjust the blood pressure, help in the production of red blood cells. These are the functions of the upper urinary tract. The lower urinary tract provides two modes of operation. One is storage and elimination of the urine. So, Storage means that it is stored in the urinary bladder and to eliminate the urine whenever necessary. And the normal function result in coordination of contraction and relaxation of muscles of the urinary bladder and urethral sphincters. So, that is one of the most important function of the urinary tract, lower urinary tract. How does the urinary system work? The body takes proteins from the food and changes from them to energy. After body has been taken food components and the waste products are left behind the bowel and in the blood. If it is in the blood, the kidney and the urinary system helps the body to get rid of the liquid waste and the solid waste. So liquid base called a urea and they also helps to keep chemicals such as sodium and potassium and also water and that should be balanced. So urea is the way, uh, end product of food containing proteins, uh, certain vegetables, meat, poultry etc. are broken down in the body and urea is carried in the blood to the kidney. The, this is where, where it is removed along with the water and other waste product that is called a urine. So, 
from the food they uh, it, um, after the um, digestion of food the waste material some of the waste material goes to the bowel and other is uh, added into the blood from the blood it is filtered in the built glomerulus and comes to the as urine so there are two types of nephrons superficial cortical nephrons and a jexa medullary nephrons so superficial cortical nephrons means they are situated in the glomeruli in the outer cortex and they are sh uh, having shorter loop of henle it dip only into the outer medulla but jexa medullary nephrons they have either glomeruli near their cortico medullary border so see the diagram of the jexa medullary nephron and the cortical nephron see the difference between each so cortical nephron so cortical nephron is in the outer cortex having short loop of henle so but jexa medullary nephron they are in the cortico medullary region so it's cortico medullary region and the loop of henle is also long so this is the difference between these two but it's both having the same collecting duct some of the clear picture of this the jexa medullary nephron and the cortical nephron so jexa medullary nephron in this picture we can see it's between in, in the cortex and the medulla so it's both it can be included and there should be a friend arterial and a friend Uh, arterion and uh, here the loop of henle you can see the difference loop of henle is long loop of henle in the jexa medullary and a short loop of henle in the um, cortical nephron so others are same thing and uh, only the difference is the size then see the difference between cortical nephron and jexa medullary nephron cortical nephron that we saw that's a is upper region of the cortex and a glomerulus is near the junction of the cortex and a medulla and 85% of the nephrons are cortical nephrons only 15% are jexa medullary nephron and the size is small glomerular size is small in a cortical and a large size in jexa medullary nephron the loop of henle is small up to the outer layer of the medulla so it should be in the outer uh, small loop of henle but here the jexa medullary nephron loop of henle is large and deep into the medulla ascending limb is the uh, limb is a thick segment in the cortical and uh, ascending limb is a thin segment in a jexa medullary an efferent arterial and large diameter and forms very tubular capillaries but efferent arterial is small diameter and forms a vasa recta and rate of filtration is very slow in cortical nephron and but rate of filtration is so high in jexa medullary nephron and comes to the major function also it's a difference major function of cortical nephron is the excretion of waste product in the urine but in jexa medullary it's a concentration of urine by counter current mechanism that's a main difference between cortical nephron and jexa medullary nephron so now comes to the nephron so we all know nephron is a functional unit of kidney so it is uh, the structure that actually produces urine in the process of removing waste and excess substance in the blood component so each of the nephron having the following com components that is first one bowen bowen capsule is the first part of the nephron blood is initially filtered that to form filtrate so in the bowen capsule that the first part of the nephron here there the blood is filtered then renal glomerulus it consists of 50 capillary vessels known as glomerular duct 
which is formed by the branching afferent arterial from the renal artery. So from the renal artery, these 50 capillary vessels that enter into the Bowman's capsule, it is known as renal glomerulus. And proximal convoluted tubule, that's a folded structure connected to the Bowman's capsule, which where selectively reabsorption occurs. So after the filtration, so selective reabsorption occurs in the proximal convoluted tubules. Next is the loop of Henle. It's a selectively permeable loop of Henle that descends into the medulla and establishes a salt gradient. Next point uh, is distal convoluted tubule. That's a folded structure connecting to the loop of Henle where further selective reabsorption occurs. So it's a distal. And the last one that's a collecting tubule that receives urine from the distal tubule. So again, okay, you can go through the picture of the nephron. So here, that's a front arterial. So it's going into some small capillaries. And this is the, uh, and this is known as glomerulus. And this is enclosed in a capsule, that is Bowman's capsule. And from the Bowman's capsule, the tube leads to the proximal convoluted tubule. And then uh, it comes to the loop of Henle. This is a loop of Henle and then distal convoluted tubule. This goes to the collecting tubule where the urine is collected and goes to the bladder. Now we look through the peculiarities, peculiarities of renal vascular system. Almost all blood that passes through the kidney has to pass through the glomerular tract. Next is renal circulation is a portal system. So the blood is to pass through the double capillary network. At first, it through the glomerular capillaries and then through the peritubular capillaries. So that almost all blood that reaches the tubule can cross the glomerular tract. There are two capillary systems, so two different functions. One is the glomerular tract filters. The other one is the tubular tract reabsorption. Next is Blood pressure is comparatively high. It is due to two reasons. The renal artery is short and wide and arises directly from the iota. It divides into small numbers of wide branches. So blood enters the kidney at a comparatively high pressure. The afferent arterial vessel is wider and shorter than afferent vessel. Due to this, glomerular pressure remains fairly high and is about 3 to 4 times more than the capillary pressure elsewhere. It is about 75 millimeters of mercury. This high glomerular pressure is very suitable for filtration. Next is rate of blood supply to the kidney is comparatively high. So about 1200 to 1300 ml of blood pass through the two kidneys per minute in a man weighing about 70 kg at rest. And the plasma flow is 600 ml per minute, minute. And the total quantity of blood in the human body may circulate through the kidneys in the four or five minutes. There are two circulations in the kidney, the greater and the lesser. The greater circulation carries 85% of blood and first passes through the super, uh, superficial cortical glomeruli, then through the peritubular network and finally joins the renal vein. And the lesser circulation carries only 15% of blood normally and passes through the uh, juxta modulary glomeruli. And the next is extra glomeruli vessels of Ludwig. So this is not much important in normally, but lesser important functions in the chronic kidney diseases where glomeruli are blocked. And the other one is neurological vasodilation. Neurologic vasodilation is not an uh, not extent, uh, existent and vasoconstriction can only be produced by stimulating the sympathetic nerve. Yes.
So next we go to the gexamedullar medullar apparatus. Gexamedullar apparatus is a combination of specialized tubular and vascular cells located near the glomerulus of each nephron. Gexamedullar apparatus is formed by three different structures. They are macula densa cells, extra glomerular messenger cells, and gexa glomerular cells. This is a picture of medulla apparatus. So here we have to see the macula densa cells and glomerular cells, glomerular epithelium, and efferent arterial smooth muscles, basement membrane, and inter internal elastic lumina, afferent arterial. So this is a distal tubule. Next we go to the macula densa. So this is specialized renal tubular epithelial cells situated between the afferent and efferent arterial of the same nephron. So it's a between the afferent and the efferent arterial of the same nephron. So macular densa plays an important role in tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism. So these cells are not innervated. So next is the extra glomerular mesenteral cells. So these cells are also called agranular cells or lassi cells. These cells are situated in the triangular region beyond, bound by the afferent arterial, afferent arterial and macula densa cells. These cells play important role in the regulation of glomerular filtration by their contractile property. So these cells have a special nature that is called its phagocytic. So next is the juxta glomerular cells. So this juxta glomerular cells is a myo, a myo epithelial cells. That means it's a modified vascular smooth muscle cells called a juxta glomerular cells. It's also called glomerular cells because presence of secretory granules in their cytoplasm. These juxta glomerular cells are well developed Golgi apparatus and endothelium reticulum and ribosomes. It's a act as a baros receptors and a inact in in uh, innervated by the sympathetic nerve fibers. So it's a well developed Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum and a ribosomes. Next is the primary uh, functions of the juxo glomerular cells. The primary function is the secretion of hormones. So it's regulate blood flow and the GFR. So these are the three main functions. First is the secretion of hormones and it also regulate blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate. It secretes the hormones called renin and the prostaglandins. We all heard about the um, hormones renin and a prostaglandin. So renin is a peptide with a 340 amino acid. It is along with angiotensin, renin forms RANS and plays an important role in the maintenance of blood pressure. So renin, renin is one of the important hormone that maintain the blood pressure. Then next is the prostaglandin. So that's secreted by interstitial cells of the medulla. This uh, gesta medullar uh, glomerular apparatus secretes cytokines like interleukin 2 and tumor necrotic necrosis factors. So next is the malpigian corpuscles or renal corpuscles. This is found only in cortex of the kidney and measures 200 micrometer in diameter and it having two parts glomerulus and a Bowman's capsule. So this is a um, renal corpuscle and uh, this have, it is the beginning of the nephron. Uh, it is a nephron's initial filtering component and the glomerulus is a capillary tuft and it's received the blood supply from the afferent arterial and of the uh, afferent arterial of renal circulation. The glomerular blood pressure provides a driving force for water and solutes to be filtered. So every day 
our nephron will have filtered about uh, our blood have about 56 times so it should be filtered 125 ml per minute so it should be 1 million nephron in each kidney so that filtered deadly uh, filter uh, filter contains deadly toxins and uh, byproducts of our metabolisms so this all comes out as a urine so this uh, renal corpuscles consist of a knot of capillaries that is called a glomerulus surrounded by double walled capsule that is Bowman's capsule that opens in the tubule blood pressure that forces plasma minus it's a macromolecules example is proteins from the glomerular capillaries into the Bowman's capsule this filter is called a capsular urine this passes into the tubule for further processing the glomerulus on the other hand is sandwiched between two arterioles that is afferent arteriole and um, afferent arterioles deliver blood to the glomerulus which afferent arteriole carried away so the construction of afferent arteriole as blood existing the glomerulus provide resistance to blood flow in preventing a pressure drop which could not be achieved if blood were there to flow into the venules which do not really constant and the two arterioles change in size to increase or decrease the blood pressure in the glomerulus in addition efferent arterioles are smaller in diameter than afferent arteriole as a result pressurized blood enters the glomerulus through a relatively wide tube that is forced to uh, exit through the narrow tube Together these unique features plus the fact that your heart is supplying your kidneys with over a liter of blood per minute maintain high glomerular capillary pressure and the filtration function of the kidney regardless of the fluctuation in the blood flow. Working from the, in, the inside out, the capillary walls are made up of three layers, endothelium layer, basement membrane, and epithelium. An endothelial layer is a relatively large pose, that means uh, 70 to 100 nanometer in diameter, which uh, solutes plasma proteins and fluids can pass through, but not blood cells. And a basement membrane, this membrane is also made up of three layers and is fused to be endothelial layer. Its job is to prevent plasma proteins from being filtered out of the bloodstream so from the endothelial layer the plasma uh, plasma proteins are filtered but basement membrane it's not allowed to filter the plasma membrane then epithelium this layer consists of specialized cells called porocytes these cells are attached to the basement membrane by food process that is pedic cells and they wrap around the capillaries but leave slits between them known as filtration slit a thin diagram uh, di diagram between the slits act as a final filtration barrier before the fluid enters the glomerular space so these three layers of the capillary walls that will allow the for the endothelial layer allow the um, it's having a large pore so it allow most of the plasma proteins to enter but basement membrane that does not allow the plasma proteins to next layer but epithelial layer that also very strict for the filtration site so glomerular filtration that's the first step of making urine formation so it's a process that your kidney use a filter that excess fluid and the waste product out of the blood into the urine and collecting tubules in the, of the kidney so it may be eliminated from the body so main substance that are excreted from the urine is metabolic waste product like urea creatine electrolytes such as sodium potassium calcium chloride bicarbonate and also water should also be eliminated so 92 uh, 90 to 120 ml per minute the glomerular filtration rate should be like that the next is the renal plasma flow. 
So renal plasma flow means total amount of plasma passing through the both kidneys per minute. That is 650 ml per minute or 55% of renal blood volume. That means 50 to 60 percent of whole blood is a water content so that is 55 percent of the total blood volume is renal plasma the definition of the plasma lot is a substance of a substance is a total amount of that substance present in the plasma passing through both kidneys per minutes that means the total uh, amount of substance from the both the kidneys per minute so in one minute how much am, uh, amount of substance to be cleared out that is uh, uh, depends upon the rpf renal plasma flow so next is the tubular load so tubular load of a substance is a total amount of that substance present in the filtrate produced by all nephrons of both the kidneys per minute. So tubular load means that substance in the total amount of substance present in the filtrate produced by all nephrons of both kidneys. So that is also depend upon the glomerular filtration rate. Next is the renal or plasma clearance. So plasma clearance of a substance means the virtual volume of plasma that contains the amount of that substance excreted through the urine per minute. So some of the substance to be excreted. So that upper minute that is called a plasma clearance or renal clearance or it means, it means the virtual volume of plasma that is cleared of that substance by renal excretion. So clearing of that substance from the plasma per minute by renal excretion process that is called a renal or plasma clearance so you should always remember that plasma clearance of a substance becomes less than glomerular filtration rate if that substance is partially reabsorbed and the plasma clearance of a substance become more than GFR rate the substance partially secreted example creatinine so reabsorbed substance of plasma clearance become less than GFR and the reabsorption substance of the um, excreting substance of the plasma is more than glomerular filtration rate. Plasma clearance of a substance equal to glomerular filtration rate filtration if that substance is neither reabsorbed nor secreted after filtration that is inulin. Inulin is a foreign substance that will be used as a uh, used for the testing the filtration or uh, how the uh, kidney will uh, filter the urine that is how much amount of the substance should be filtered in a uh, fixer time. So that should be inulin is a foreign substance. So the substance Plasma clearance of a substance means neither it should be reabsorbed nor secreted, completely filtered. So it's completely reabsorbed substance. So we come to the glucose. Glucose is completely reabsorbed. So there should be plasma clearance for the glucose is zero. That means completely reabsorbed. There is no glucose should be present in the um, filtered urine. So importance of plasma clearance is a, is a marker of renal function. So plasma clearance is a marker of renal function. For example, in a patient with a progressive renal failure, plasma clearance of a substance is gradually decreases. And also its assessment of severity of renal impairment. So we can assess the severity of renal impairment by doing the plasma clearance test. Third function is it's a measurement of glomerular filtration and the glomerul, uh, um, uh, ren uh, renal plasma filtration. So it's also determination of the effective dose of drugs which are cleared by the kidney. 